We would like to represent the number 0 in floating point binary by 32 zeros, just as we see here. But we're not able to do that using the normalised form, which we've seen in the previous video. So let's see why that is. This is a normalised equation here. Now, if we were, were looking at the sine bit, the sine bit's just the same. 0 will give us a value of minus 1 to the power of 0, which will just give us the value of 1. The mantissa, well, we would be adding 1 on to the mantissa. So the mantissa in the fixed point number system would be given by the 1 here and the fractional part, which would be point zero 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 and we would have all the rest of the zeros here. And this would be times two to the power of the exponent minus one two seven. So the exponent again is all zeros. So it would be zero minus one two seven. So it would be two to the minus one two seven. So we're just going to have the value one from here and we're going to have the two to the minus one two seven. So that's just going to be two to the minus one two seven and this is going to be the smallest number that we could represent. So this number would be approximately equal to 5.827 times 10 to the minus 39. Now it is a very small number, but it is not equal to zero. It's approximately equal to zero, but not equal. So what we do is we introduce something called the subnormal form. Now, whenever all of the exponent values are zero, so the exponent is just given by eight zeros. Then we introduce the subnormal form. Now the subnormal form is written like this. The sign remains the same. The mantissa is different because we don't have the plus one. We just leave that as the zero. And the bias changes. So the bias, instead of being the exponent minus one, two, seven, is going to be one minus the 127, which in effect would be 126. Now, I haven't written this out as just simply 126, because if we were doing, say, for example, 64-bit um, or 128-bit, then the new value here would be uh, a slightly different, because it would be 1 minus whatever that particular bias was for that number of bits. So we'll get into that in the uh, a later video when we look at the actual IEEE representation. But all we need to do now is just accept that this is the new equation that we use whenever the exponent is all zeros. So in the denormalized form, the zero here is understood in the same way that in the normalized form, the one here is understood. Also, in the denormalized form, we note that there aren't any 1s here in the exponent. So, in the normalized form, we would shift the decimal point up until we found the very first 1 in the exponent. But in this case, there is no 1 in the exponent to be found. So, what we can do is we can decide to take the decimal point and we can take the decimal point at the first point of the mantissa. So we could take the decimal point here. So if the decimal point was here, we would have the value times 2 to the minus 127. But we have already said that this is a denormalized form, so we know that the first bit is a zero. So we can actually move the point here up to this point here. So in doing so, this would then give us, instead of 2 to the minus 1, 2, 7, because we've moved the point further up here, it'll be 2 to the minus 1, 2, 6. And that's how you get the 1 minus 2, 7 here. 1 minus 2, 7 gives us the minus 1, 2, 6. So that's a description of sorts. It's not fully detailed, but it gives you a good indication of the subnormal form. Again, it's best seen by example, so let's work through a few examples and it'll all become a lot clearer. So let's look at the example of using all zeros. 
We know that the sine bit is going to be given by minus 1 to the power of 0. So there's nothing new there. And we're multiplying that by, in this case, it's going to be 0 plus what the mantissa is. In this case, the mantissa is all 0, so we could just represent it by a 0. And we're going to multiply this whole thing by 2 to the power of minus 1, 2, 6. Now, when we're doing this denormalized or subnormal form, the power here is always 1 minus the 1, 2, 7, so it's always fixed at minus 1, 2, 6. It never changes. Now, all we're going to do is multiply one thing with another and then multiply the whole thing with 0. So if you multiply anything by 0, you just get a value of 0. So that means that we can represent 0 with all of these 32 bits being 0. So that's a simple one. But the, the power of using this subnormal method will be shown on the next example. Now we're going to look at the smallest value that can be represented using our subnormal form. And it's going to be given by all zeros and a 1 in the last digit. So what we're going to have here again is minus 1 to the power of 0 for the sine bit. In this case, for the mantissa, we're going to have the value of 0 plus. Now it's going to be the mantissa, in this case here, the mantissa, it starts at, po at point 10. So the actual point is actually there, okay, here. So we're going to have this is 1 upon 2, 1 upon 4, 8, 16, 32, so on and so forth. So that's actually going to be 2 raised to the power of, and this is going to be at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way along till you get to 23. And of course it's minus 23 because it's the fractional part. So we're going to have that, and we're going to have that multiplied by 2 to the power of minus 1, 2, 6. And you can see the power in this now because it means that the smallest number we can represent is actually smaller than 2 to the minus 1, 2, 6. It's 2 to the minus 1, 2, 6 plus all of the zeros that we have here up to the start of the mantissa, which is 2 to the minus 23. So this number here is going to be minus 1 to the 0, which is a value of 1, and it's going to be 2 to the minus 23 minus 1, 2, 6. So it's going to be minus 23, and it's going to be minus 1, 2, 6. So we just add those two together, which is going to give us 2 to the minus 1, 2, 6. That's 3, 6, 4, 6. That's 1 minus 1, 4, 9. So in decimal, that's going to give us 1.4013 times 10 to the minus 45. Of course, that's approximate. I've just rounded that. So we've seen the smallest number that we can represent using the subnormal form, which is 2 to the minus 149, which is approximately equal to 1.4013 times 10 to the minus 45 in decimal. Now what we want to do is compare this number to the smallest fractional part of not the subnormal form but just the normal form that we've seen in the previous video just to see the difference between the sizes and the of the smallest fractional part in both forms. So this number here is going to give us the smallest fractional part Okay, so as long as it's got a 1 just at the very end there, it's going to give us the smallest fractional part. So if we look at the first part here, the, po the 0 is positive. So we'll put that as a positive. And we know that, well, we'll actually write it in as we would the actual formula. So it's going to be minus 1 to the power of 0 times 
Well, this is going to be 1 plus 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. There's no 1, 2, 8 here, so this whole thing here must be 1, 2, 7. So that's going to be a, a value of uh, 1, 2, 7 for the exponent. So it's going to be 1, 2, 7. But in order to get the actual exponent, we're going to have to take the bias, which is 1, 2, 7. So we're taking that away from that. So that's in effect going to give us a value of 0. So it means we're going to have the sign is going to be uh, a positive. So it's just going to be 1. So it's going to be 1 times. And the bias is going to be 2 to the power of 127 minus 127. So it's 2 to the power of 0. So that means that the bias is here, the exponent part is going to be really just given by 1 times 2 to the 0 and the power of 0 is uh, just the value of 1 so that's just going to be 1 and we're going to have the mantissa part and the mantissa part here is just going to be the value of the 2 to the minus 23 and it would be plus the 1 for mantissa 1 and then you'd have 2 to the minus 23 so you can see here, it's just really going to give us 1 times 1 is 1. So it's just going to have 1 plus 2 to the minus 23. So it means that the 1 is a whole part, but the 2 to the minus 23 is a fractional part. So the smallest number that you can represent here in this form is going to be 2 to the minus 23. Now 2 to the minus 23 is considered, isn't as small as 2 to the minus 149. So you can see here by using this subnormal form, we can actually represent much, much smaller numbers. And that is very, very useful in uh, scientific, ca scientific calculations when you're comparing one thing to another. So you can see that 2 to the minus 23, we could put that into the decimal format and we can see what size that is. So that's going to be approximately equal to the value 1.000000, so that's six zeros, 11921. Now, as we said, we're only interested in the smallest fractional part, so we can get rid of this one here. So that's going to mean it's approximately equal to the value 1.1921 times 10 to the power of minus. So that's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times 10 to the minus 7. So we can see here that the smallest number we can represent, fractional number we can represent, is 1.1921 times 10 to the minus 7. And the normal form, but in the subnormal form we can represent 1.4013 times 10 to the minus 45. So you can see the power in using the subnormal form, we can get far, far closer to zero, and that's very, very important in scientific calculations. So that's all there is for this video. In the next video we'll go ahead and we'll look at a few examples using the subnormal form. So thank you for listening. Goodbye.